Hello, and welcome to today's webinar on Business Process Automation Workflow Engine, a new tool that's available in IFS Cloud 21R1. My name is Rick Bucchino, Senior Client Manager with IFS North America. A brief agenda. I'll go through a description. What is Business Process Automation? I'll talk about our new Workflow Designer. We'll talk about business process modeling notation. Then I'll go through some examples of the three different types of business process automations. That would be validation, user interaction, and process enrichment. And then we'll do a demonstration of one of these. So here's just a quick definition of business process automation that came from Wikipedia. So business process automation, also known as business automation or digital transformation, is the technology enabled automation of complex business processes. It can streamline a business for simplicity, achieve digital transformation, increase service quality, improve service delivery, and or contain costs. As part of IFS's continuous goal to make our software easier to use and tailor, business process automation or BPA functionality is now available within the IFS Cloud 21 R1 release. This means that a workflow engine has been embedded to enhance the automation and tailoring experience of IFS Cloud. A workflow is a sequence of tasks that automate or process a set of data. They can occur across every kind of business and industry interaction. Anytime data is passed between humans and or systems, a workflow is performed. These are also the paths that describe how something goes from being undone to done or from raw to process, for example. With the business process automation features being built into the event framework and the REST API framework, it means that we can leverage our current functionality but also enhance it. An example of this is triggering an event that is linked to a business process automation, which triggers different automation, such as calling a projection with an IFS, or even triggering the user to enter additional information based on the transaction they're performing within the system. So a little bit about the workflow designer. Here in the middle of the screen, you can see the workflow designer tool. When licensed, it's found in the solution manager and it's part of the event framework. You can invoke these business process automations or automations from a custom event. There are currently three process automations available. There's validation, user interaction, and process enrichment, which I'm gonna discuss in a little more detail later on. So this is a more visual way of modeling a process in the system. And we use stage deployment, where once you've deployed it to the server, that's when it becomes active. And it, it's real time. So when you've deployed it, it's active for the users in real time. When we talk about business process automation, it's really about inputs and outputs. So when an input is created, whether it's from a user on the arena interface or a message from IFS Connect or an integration with using Dell Booming, et cetera, then based off your process models in the workflow engine, it then decides what are we doing next? Are we calling a REST API? Are we validating a transaction? Are we prompting the user to enter more information? Or maybe we're gonna perform an asynchronous transaction where a background job is submitted and then possibly other automations are triggered. All right, we're gonna talk a little bit about business process model notation or BPMN. So BPMN is the global standard for process modeling and it's one of the most important components of successful business and IT alignment. More and more organizations are using BPMN, and in more and more universities, it's actually taught as a subject. Um, there, the reasons are standards. Um, BPN, BPMN is not owned by a certain enterprise, but by an institution uh, referred to as OMG, which is already established through other worldwide standards, for example, UML. The standard is supported by many software products, so you're less dependent on any particular vendor's products. Simplicity, the principle behind BPMN is rather simple, which is why you can start working with this notation very quickly. And power of expression, if necessary, you can 
describe precisely how a process functions within BPMN. And implementation in IT is where BPMN has been primarily developed to support the technical implementation of processes or process automation. The more important IT is in a company, the more helpful the use of BPMN becomes. So this is our workflow designer. And as you can see, there are several symbols on the workspace. And I'm going to go through a few slides here and talk about these symbols. So some common events um, are start events and end events. The first symbol you see on the screen is the start event. And this is probably the most common symbol you use because you always have to have this to start a process. And with this tool, we've actually automated adding the start event. So when you create a new process, the start event is already on the, on the workspace. And then, the, of course, the end event defines when a transaction ends or when the process is finished. So you always will have an end event in every process. The next symbol here is a failure event. This is specifically used in our validation BPAs. This is where you'll define the error message that a user will see on the screen when you use a validation BPA. A validation BPA is when you want to prevent a transaction from happening in the system due to certain conditions not being met. This is actually an adaptation of the end event, and it was made specifically in this IFS engine to define a failure event. We'll talk about these tasks. We have user task and service task. The first one, user task, is used for user interaction BPAs. A user interaction is when a user enters information into the system and they're then prompted to enter additional information based on the transaction just performed. The next one, uh, service task, is then used to trigger external services or REST API calls. A script task is a Java-based function used to automate an activity. This, for example, would allow you to update another field within the same table that triggered the BPA. The next one is process enrichment task, which is an adaptation of the service task. This task allows you to store variables to be then used in the ongoing workflow. For example, you might update the status of a record then wish to collect the type of record as a variable and then use that variable further in the process automation. This projection delegate task is also another adaptation of a service task. We expect that this task is going to be very commonly used in IFS BPAs. This is the task where you'll be able to state a projection, an entity set, and the action that you want to do. These actions could be create a record, read a record, update a record, or even delete a record. And this is where great solution flexibility comes in, where you can actually perform a transaction in one table and then create or update a record in a different table. This kind of power is contained within this projection delegate task. Gateways are used to show decisions that are based on data and specific conditions. There are two types of gateways that will be needed in most use cases. The first is the exclusive gateway, where you define if the data is X, then go one way, or if the data is Y, then, then go down another path. Um, the data can only take one of two paths with an exclusive gateway. Whereas an inclusive gateway is similar, however, the process could take two paths. That is, it could follow two paths, for example, when you want more than one action to occur when you have a stated condition. So there is some good information out there about business process modeling notation. It's available on the Komunda website at the link you see here. There's a lot more detail about all these symbols, and there's also a link there to a tutorial. All right, now we'll dig into a little more detail of the, the three types of BPAs in IFS. There's the validation, user interaction, and process enrichment. And we'll go into a little more details on each of these. 
Validation BPAs are configured to stop a user from performing a transaction in the system. The BPA can populate an error or informational message to the user. That message can be localized for the user's language. But basically, they're alerted uh, to stop the transaction from occurring, and this can be done without the need for any custom development. So a little bit of details on how that's done. First, we would have an event or a custom event that's, that's configured to trigger when the BPA should fire. This process is the same for any custom event. If you're familiar with these, it's no different. So we're going to create initially the custom event. And then we're going to use that failure, that event within the business process automation. So within the when we define the business process automation, we add the decisions and tasks accordingly. And then we add the IFS failure event. You notice the, the, the black symbol there um, and select it. And when we select it, we can define the error message and locale or language that you want to appear to the users. So once I've finished my validation process, I give it a name and save it. And then once I've saved it, I then deploy it to the server. Once that's done, I create an event action against the event, and the action type is workflow. And I'll add the workflow ID that I just created in the workflow tool. And then I select, you know, validation and timing, you know, should it occur before, or after, et cetera. And then I enable this event action. So user interaction BPAs are used when a user performs an action and the business process requests the user to enter additional information regarding that transaction. That information that can then be used with a create, read, update, or delete operation calling a different projection. So again, very similar process where I'm going to create the custom event, which is the initial trigger of the BPA. I then go to my workflow engine and create the BPA. And then in the user task, I'll select that and the details panel will change over on the right. And I select the forms tab and enter the field ID, the field type label and the locale or language for the label that's gonna be seen by the user. Then I enter the form key and the different form fields that are required to be made visible to the user. And the fields that are in this example are projection fields that are then used in the final projection call. And then I select the IFS projection delegate task and choose the action, the projection name and the entity set. Notice that the production delegate task doesn't always have to be straight after a user task. In this scenario, the user enters the information and then that information is used to create the record. I add my end events and select the conditions and enter the script to get a variable that I've added to the previous user task. Select the next condition, enter the prompt, enter the script, and the variable. And again, I hit the Save button, give the workflow a name, deploy it to the server, and then go and create my event action, selecting that event, choosing the action type workflow, and choosing the right workflow name. And then, of course, I will configure the timing and enable the event action. Now we'll talk about process enrichment BPAs. And these are used to provide the functionality, again, where data is required to be altered, resulting in creating, updating, or deleting of data. Process enrichment is where the BPA invokes automation that enriches the transaction process or action within the system. This can be, for example, calling our internal REST APIs or projection operations to create, read, update, or even delete a record. And also, we can update a field within the table that invokes the BPA. So here in this example of this process enrichment BPA, we are using the projection delegate task, where over on the right, we choose the action, the projection name, and the entity set. And then just as we did with the others, you know, we create the uh, event action and call this BPA. 
a little bit about documentation and training. The business process automation is documented within the IFS cloud technical documentation. You'll find it under the subject IFS tailoring guide. And then there's a subfolder, business process automation. And then there's a lot more detail behind that, including architecture integrations, custom delegates, IFS delegates, scripting, error handling, and so on. And in addition, we do offer an academy course with a lot more detail. Uh, you can find this in the IFS Academy if you're registered for that. Uh, in this case right now, this is a self-paced course and it's lift, listed at uh, $95 USD. The total duration is about an hour and a half. So with that, let's go in and do a demonstration of creating and invoking one of these BPAs. Okay, to begin the actual software demo of a validation BPA, I'm going to log in to IFS Cloud as myself. And you can see that I set my home page to take me to the CRM central lobby. But let me set up the scenario for you a little bit. We're going to work with an object in IFS called Business Lead. And the scenario is that when I create a new business lead, I want to perform a validation BPA so that if I set the stage to initial, that I want to make sure that the source field is not empty or null. So the user, if they set the stage to initial, the user must select one of the valid values for the source field. So that's the basic scenario. And what we'll do now is we'll set up some of the, the beginning parts of the event, and then we'll go in and create the workflow. So the first step is for me to have an event against this entity called Business Lead. And I have a shortcut to my events in my solution manager. And if we go ahead and put a filter in here, and I'm going to filter on the entity for business lead. Actually, I can just enter the word business, and I get a number of entities that have that begin with business. And you'll see that I do have already created a custom event for business lead creation. And let's go in and take a look at that. We'll view the details. And this is simply an event that will trigger when we create a new record in the business lead uh, area of CRM. And once I've got this event already created, then I can go forward and create my workflow against this event. Okay, so now we'll go, go back to my, my main menu. And if I go down to the Solution Manager, I will find a new item called Workflow Designer that is located here. And that opens up the workflow that I showed you in the previous PowerPoints. We'll collapse down that menu. So just a quick tour. Here is the library of symbols. Out here in the right is this panel where we define, when we choose a symbol, where we define the various aspects and parameters. And then we have this toolbar with some commands. We can open an existing diagram uh, that might be saved as a file on my local PC. I have the ability to download an existing BPM diagram. I have the ability to save an image. If I'm documenting this and I want to save my diagram as an image, I can do that. I can create a new diagram, which we're going to do in a second. I then, this is the button where I would deploy the diagram at the end of my process of creating it. I can load an existing one if I have one already saved to the server that I want to load and update. This is my save button. And then this actually just toggles 
the panel to the right on and off. So as you can see, I'm already in the mode of creating a new process or a new BPA, and my start event is automatically there, as I mentioned. Of course, I have the ability to drag and drop from this library of, of symbols, but I also can do the same by adding new symbol, adding symbols by clicking on a symbol and then appending to it. So in my case, after the start event, the first thing I want to do in this example is append a gateway. So I simply choose that, and you'll see how it added that gateway in. So I can define this gateway, and I can choose and state that this is evaluating the stage. Stage is initial. and save that. And then I'm going to go ahead and append in another gateway. And in this case, this, this gateway will be to define whether the source is got a value or is null. So of course, in our example, if the source, if the stage is initial and the source is null, we're going to then append an end event. And then we're going to go ahead in and define more specifically that end event as an IFS failure event. And here is where we can define the message to the user. When we click on that, that end event or that failure event symbol, here I can add the error message. First thing is I need to choose the locale or language. In my case, it's going to be in English. And then the message to the user will be if stage is Initial source must be selected. So that is the error message that will crop up to the user in English. If the stage is initial, we'll make that a capital I, source must be selected. So the next thing we need to do is now define what the end event is for each gateway. So in this case, I'm going to define an end event. If the stage is initial, of course, it's going to go to this gateway and evaluate if the source is null. Otherwise, it's going to go to an end event. And then the same thing here. If the source is not null, it should then go to an end event. And I can straighten that up a little bit. And there. So the next thing we have to do is define the conditions. So again, in looking at this workflow, the first gateway is if the stage is initial, then if yes, it flows to evaluating whether the source is null. If in fact that is true, we get the failure event. If the stage is initial and the source is not null, then it ends. Or if the stage is initial and the source does have a value, then it ends. But we do need to find, define these conditions. So we do that by clicking on these arrows. And then I have the ability over here now in the right to define the conditions. And the first thing is the condition type. We're going to choose script. And then the script format, we're going to enter JavaScript. And then in the script type, we're going to choose inline script. And then we have to define the actual script. And what I've done, and it's a good practice to uh, save these, uh, I've, I've gone ahead and saved them in a notepad file so that I can easily just 
copy and paste. In this case, this particular one is execution to get the variable, again, stage ID, and then I needed to use the API Explorer to be able to understand what that variable was. But once I've got that defined, I saved it in a notepad so that I could reuse it. And we simply just paste that in here. And then there is now my script defined. And now I also need to define the conditions for the next one. And again, following that, that same process that I did, I choose the condition type script. I have to give it a value. JavaScript, it is an inline script. And then taking that from my notepad, again, I saved this. You don't have to watch me type. Paste that in. And then again, so this is evaluating that if that source field is null. So the last thing that we need to do, as we know, we've defined these conditions for this flow here, but what if the stage is not initial? Then we want to end the event, so we need to define that condition. And an easy way of doing that is to go in and go in and define this as a default flow. So what I've done is I selected it and chose the little wrench icon, and I was able to select this to be the default flow if this flow is not true. And I can do the same on the other, define that as the default flow. And you see it now has that little hash symbol across the flow arrow, and that's indicating to me that that is my default flow if these conditions are not met. So now that we've fully defined our business process flow, here we need to we need to give it a name. And I'm calling it BPA Business Lead Validate 1. And once I've done that, I need to save it. And again, just I had a little shortcut there, but I have to type in the name BPA Business Lead Validate 1 and click Save. And I get a message that was successfully saved to the server. I can close that. And the next step is I need to deploy it. And again, the name Business BPA Business Lead Validate 1 and deploy it. And I get a message that it has been successfully deployed to the server. So now this business process, and I'll copy this because we're going to use this later on here in my demo, this business process automation or BPA name is now deployed to the server and I can use it in an event action. So we'll go ahead over to back to the event area. So now we'll go in and create the event action using that new workflow ID I just created. So coming back to my list of events, again, I'm going to filter on the entity. Come down to my business lead creation. We'll take a look at that, the details. And what I want to do is create against this a new event action. First thing I do is I choose the event action type. And in this case, it's going to be the new workflow. And I need to provide a description. Validate business lead. Simply enter that and click next. Here I need to enter the workflow ID. And again, this is where having had copied it from the previous screen, I'm able to simply paste it in. I need to choose the type. In this case, this is a validation BPA, and the timing is going to be before. Come down to the bottom and click Next. And really, the last thing I need to do is enable the event action and click Finish. And so here is the event action detail. This is the workflow business lead validate happening before we save the transaction. 
And now we just simply need to go test it. Going back to my from my recent screens, I've got business lead. And what I'm going to do is create a new record. Creating a lead called Joe's Coffee. I'm going to set the stage to initial. And I'm going to save the record. And you'll notice I got the warning message from my business process automation that if the stage is initial, the source must be selected. So I don't, I cannot save this record. So simply come into source and choose telemarketing and hit save. And you'll notice the record saved successfully. And we can try that again, doing it a little bit differently. Create a new record for Bob's Coffee. And I'm going to set the stage to in contact. I'm going to leave the source null. So the stage is not initial. Stage source is null. Click Save. And you'll notice that it did let me save the record because my source, my stage, was not initial. So that concludes today's webinar on business process automation workflow engine. There is much more to learn about it. Uh, you can again find that in the documentation and the academy offers uh, considerably more training than and demonstration than I've done here. I hope you enjoyed today's webinar. Thank you.